So, who was K not? Unfortunately, that's something we will probably never know. But um, this is the uh, pipe wrench that he made some years ago now. And this one was sent to me by uh, my friend Ben over there at Tool Addict. So uh, this is what we're going to be taking a look at today, a close examination. And it's a very nice piece of kit, I can tell you. For those of you out there that don't know, I happen to like to, uh, collecting footprint wrenches. And I have uh, quite a collection here in my drawer. And also in a toolbox down there as well, there's a few of them kicking about. I also like to collect other footprint tools, but uh, mainly my favourite is the wrenches here. And that includes uh, items like this, which is a, a copy, foreign copy. And uh, if I can get them, I also like <clears throat> apprentice pieces like this one here. I've already got a review of this one um, on my channel if you want to take a look at it, just here. So this is a, my first apprentice piece I got, and this is a very nice too, is that one. And as you can see, these are two very different uh, styles of apprentice pieces. Very nice indeed, both of them. Um, I could do a video detailing the differences between the two at some future date. But for, day, for today, we'll be taking a look at uh, K Knott's idea of what a footprint wrench should be. The footprint wrench has been around since 1875. Um, here is a picture of what I believe to be an original from the time when they were made by T. Thomas R. Ellen. What I have here is a uh, contemporary footprint wrench. This is the style you can purchase today. And the, the design hasn't changed a great deal um, over the years, but um, looking at my collection, I can see incremental changes to them. Okay, so how do they work? Well, they look like a pair of pliers, basically. But um, we have this uh, pivot pin here. Unscrew the pivot pin, and you can see there is a uh, holes in the hook here, so we can move it along to this hole here. Replace the pivot pin. If I can line them up. There we go. And then we can work on a different size of uh, pipe or nut or whatever you want to undo. They're uh, very good for uh, undoing nuts and pipe and stuff like that. They're very good design. As I say, it's been about since 1875, so they must have done something right with them. So what we have here is K. Knott's interpretation of a footprint wrench. Um, he may very well have uh, drafted this out. Um, out of his own mind possibly, you know, designed it himself uh, based on the uh, footprint wrench of uh, the time and drew it out and then he would have had to uh, manufacture it entirely himself, machine it and cut it and possibly even harden these parts here. So uh, let's take it apart and have a look at its basic parts, its components and here we are. Here is the hook his idea of what the hook should look like. We've got the little uh, pry bar screwdriver chisel at the end here. We have the four adjustment holes, the teeth on the end of the hook here. We have the handle, which is made from galvanized sheet steel, as you can probably see there. He has uh, made his own jaw, riveted it in quite nicely I think, and he, he has used a uh, two-piece pivot pin as a, uh, rather than try and thread the galvanized steel here. It's probably a lot stronger actually, the way he's done it this way. Taking a look at the handle here, as I say it is made from galvanized steel. And um, I've had a close look, but if we look in here, you can actually see there's some lines been scribed in here. There are three lines in here. That one there you can see is the um, centre line. And he's also scribed two other lines where he bent the sheet over. You can just about 
see that one there I think there's a line runs down there and there's also a line runs down here too that's where he bent material to make the handle drilled it out here and here drilled some little holes for the riveting here riveting is interesting um, they're square on this end as it were and he's rounded them off on this end here and you can see looking at this one here you can see there's a little bit of a material sticking out just there and on that one there too so um, yeah it's all, all done by hand you can see the difference in fit this side from this side so he's not quite got it right but uh, all the same I hope he got a good score for this one the teeth are a little bit flat again not too much of a bother because you can still you can feel the uh, they are fairly sharp ish but I can feel the uh, grip just there but he's not done too bad and then he's painted it all blue which uh, over the years has come off unfortunately it would have been very nice to see it when it was new let's take a look at the hook okay so he's uh, machined out the hook from a chunk of a fairly hefty material here. How thick is this? Do you know, I've not looked how thick this material is yet. Where's my vernier? Okay, so we can see it's uh, 9.5 millimeters thick, or 3 eighths of an inch thick, which I think is more likely what it will be. 3 eighths of an inch thick stock, like this original hook here. Mr. Knot, or Miss Knot, whichever it is, has drilled four holes for the pivot pin for the adjustment and they've obviously been uh, I, I would say they've been countersunk with a drill bit took the burrs off with a drill bit because we've got this slightly uh, hexagonal shape here going on with the holes both sides and um, the chances are he's probably hardened it as well I don't know what's going on at the end here but I'd imagine he's probably hardened this as well because these holes are all black in there they're not being polished as you can see like the rest of it obviously and there's obviously, I think there's um, signs of draw filing going on here, too. But uh, yeah, uh, and he's cut the uh, the teeth, and I'm quite interested in how he's cut the teeth here. Um, let's compare it with this hook here. Martin, you can see the original footprint has evenly spaced teeth along it. Hey, not has done variable teeth on his. Now, whether this is intentional and by design, which it may very well have been, I don't know, because they're also at a slight angle here as well. Maybe he did the uh, smaller teeth for gripping smaller items and the bigger teeth for gripping larger items. If he did that, that's uh, very clever of him, I think. And we've also got some little lines going on just here as well. Now, whether that's just the filing on the machine, I don't know. But uh, that, I think, is a very clever design. Um, by Mr. Knott, K. Knott. The handle on a genuine wrench is uh, threaded on one side and just a hole on the other but it's threaded to, to take the pivot pin as you see here. So what has K. Knott done? Well he has decided to use a two-piece setup here. We have the pivot pin itself um, we were trying to work out the age of this uh, particular wrench and we think it's pre-metrication because this is a quarter BSF thread on here. And here's this uh, little mating part here. Let's have a look. There we go. Because it's uh, he's, um, countersunk it this side but not this side. So really it screws in more happily from this side than it does this side here. I don't know if that's by design or not, but uh, yeah. So there is uh, Mr. Knott's pivot pin. Adjustment is exactly the same as a footprint wrench. We simply uh, slide the jaw, the hook out till we get to the uh, hole we want. Bring in the pivot pin, push it through, and then screw on the little thumb wheel here. Uh, this makes it quite strong because if you was to try to thread this out it wouldn't be very strong at all because it's only very thin material so this makes it actually quite a good idea quite strong
Now I would say, Mr. Knot or Miss Knot made this piece possibly in the 1940s, possibly in the 1950s or even the 1960s. Because um, as I say, these, these uh, older ones are, they do actually have an imperial thread here. Um, during the 1970s, possibly late 60s, early 70s, footprint moved along to metrication and you can see here this one says uh, 225 millimeters in the hook or 9 inches 9 inches of 225 mil and we have a uh, metric thread in here as far as I know and things have changed a little bit the design has changed a little bit so <clears throat> this as I say it's 40s, 50s or 60s, I would have said, said myself when this uh, tool was made. I did wonder why this wonderful little tool ended up in a car boot sale and was purchased by my friend Ben. Because, you know, if you spent time drafting this thing out, drawing it out, like we did at school, when I was at school we did technical drawing, and I think he designed this thing himself or herself, and then had to... Um, actually make the thing, possibly machine it out, maybe hacksaw it, ha machine it possibly, I would say there's, there is quite a bit of machining going on in here, as you can see, with the uh, jaws and the teeth and what have you, so there's quite a bit of machining going on in this, and he's had to uh, machine and knurl the uh, pivot pin here, knurling is quite a difficult job, I've done it myself, you've really got to uh, put some effort into it, and it's been drilled and tapped very nicely, machined and tapped very nicely there, as I say, quarter BSF. So, you know, I wondered why this thing would end up in a car boot sale, because, you know, if you spent all that time making it, why would you give it away? Why would you get rid of it? I don't think you would. I know I wouldn't. I'd want to hang on to this as long as I possibly could. And unfortunately, I think this is probably from a deceased estate somewhere. You know, somebody's going through somebody's tools. Oh yeah, we'll throw that lot out, we don't need that lot anymore. And um, this ended up in the car boot sale. And now it is part of my collection. And I think it is um I think it's a very, very nice piece indeed. I mean you can see uh it's been engraved. He's engraved his name on there and the hook. It's not come out too well on the hook because I think he's probably tried um engraving it after he's hardened it. Which would have took a lot more effort. But uh yeah. What a beautiful piece. <clears throat> so, you know, probably, uh, as I say, he started uh, at a company somewhere. Um, and if he was drafting it out himself, it's it quite a good job he had there. You know, going up to the technical drawing room, drafting this thing out, designing it himself, thinking what it should look like. I mean, if we had a time machine, I would love to go back in time with this thing, find... Um, Mr. Not or Miss Not, um, have a word with him or her, find out what they were thinking of, you know, watch them design it, watch them making it, see what kind of a score they got for it. And I think, you know, they'd, I, would, I would have given them a very good score for this because it's a really nice piece actually. So uh, hopefully that did their uh, career some good. I wonder if he designed any other tools. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Alrighty then, so I would like to thank Ben from Tool Addict for uh, sending this along for me, for my collection. A very intriguing piece. As I say, we will most probably never know who um, k Not was. Somebody out there will know who he was, but we'll never know. And, uh, you know, we'll never know what company he worked for. How well he did during his career, or looking at this I would say he did fairly well in his career. And um, we'll also never know how this managed to find its way to a car boot sale, although I do have my ideas how it made it there, which, uh, you know, it's a shame really, but, um, you know, I'm glad to have it in my collection now anyway. Oh, I really like this piece. So, so thank you, Ben. So, a very interesting piece, an apprentice piece, I do believe. Uh, with a very interesting backstory that we will most probably never know, this 
the video is just my idea of where it came from. As I say, he may have drafted it himself, designed it himself, drafted it himself, probably got a score for the design, and then he went ahead and made it up himself. Uh, machined it all up, as you can see. Did a very good job of it, I think. Got a fit and finish. Quite like it. And as I say, I think this probably dates from what, 1940, 1950, maybe even 1960. I don't know, but as I say, if we had a time machine, we could uh, go back in time and take a look at it being made, probably even speak to uh, not, K not, male or female, don't know, we'll never know, and we'll never know whatever happened to uh, the guy either, which is a shame, but uh, yeah, so um, I do hope you enjoyed popping over to Rathbone Manor once again, taking a look at another interesting old tool here another apprentice piece this is the second one in my collection uh, when I get back out to the car boot sale next year now when they start again hopefully I will be able to hunt round for another apprentice piece but yeah I do like this one this is very nice indeed so thank you very much Ben alright then guys thanks for popping over Thanks for taking a look at this tool here and its interesting backstory that, as I say, we will never know. But, uh, you know, just an idea I've come up with what it could have happened to it. But, yeah, so uh, thanks for popping over and thanks for watching. <laughs>